<laughs> you get to go? Yeah. We're, we're rolling, aren't we? This is beautiful. Welcome to the Just Life podcast. It is our hope that the gritty, real, and uncensored insights we share with you here will help you get your shit together as you explore and discover what it takes to live your best life on your terms. We got a really special series of podcasts coming up over the next couple of weeks. It is about purpose. Uh, what is it? How do you find yours? We talk about this a lot on the podcast. As a society, we've become inundated with false hopes as we strive to meet with the unrealistic expectations and half-truths that are painted over media. In our hyper-connected world, we've never felt so disconnected. So many of us are grappling with being able to answer that question with any sense of certainty or direction. There was a time when the focus was on our careers that fulfilled us. For some, that's still a big driver, but not quite the whole story. So what then is our purpose? How do you find it? Well, the answer might be simpler to uncover than you think. And so on the mics, I have Richard Boucher. Butcher? Booker. Booker. I, it'll probably take me a few times to get that right. No worries. And we have Holly Kelly on the the first time probably on a, on a microphone with a podcast. Yes, absolutely. Well, welcome, Holly. <laughs> so the idea around this is to um, share a little bit about yourself, to give everybody listening uh, an idea of um, what you have been doing and what you are going to be sharing with everybody at an upcoming event, which is called a day on purpose. And this was a, a big driver that uh, Richard had shared with me. Uh, this would have been a handful of months ago now. And uh, it's a big, uh, a big passion project for you, right, Richard? It, it's really the, the culmination of a lifetime. You know, I, I, um, I think one of all the work, the work I've been doing over the last 30 years is working with individuals. A lot of them are in transition, not by choice. And in those circumstances, when they're uh, often emotionally impacted, in some cases emotionally wounded, that's not uncommon, they're starting to ask some really big life questions. And what am I really doing? What is this all about? I've invested all this time and energy and, and money, frankly, in, in getting to be who I am. And now that's been taken from me, and now what? And every week I had people coming to my office with no clarity around why am I, what am I, what's this about? What am I supposed to do? What do I want to do? Who do I want to be? What do I want to be? And, and more and more the audiences I speak to are filled with people that are dealing with these questions. So it's probably summed up best, uh, something I wrote in my book that, that I believe everyone has a purpose and my purpose is to help you find yours. Mm -hmm. That's what this is all about. Yeah. It's, uh, it's an amazing, as, as someone who is exploring that and has been exploring that for, uh, the last seven years. So I hit 40 just this last year and I'll be 41 in January. And, um, some people might consider that the midlife crisis. Uh, so I've been told, so media has fed the story to me and, uh, and, and for, from my perspective, this is uh, truly when it's just beginning, right? This, this journey of, of discovery and it's all in how we frame it. And, uh, and when we, when we have a powerful context, like an ability to, to look at it in a certain way, um, purpose tends to find us versus us trying to find purpose. At least that's been my experience so far. Um, so Holly, you have a, a very, uh, a very interesting lens into what guides us, what, uh, what are some of those driving forces that, uh, for the most part, we are not aware of. There's a large majority that are just not aware of some of these driving forces. Can you share a little bit about what that is? Sure. And I think I'd like to start with one of the first things that you had mentioned when you, you know, in your introduction was the disconnect, mm. the disconnect that uh, many people appear 
to be experiencing. And um, my work, I'm a social worker in a hospital. And so I too, uh, as Richard was saying, meet with people on a regular basis about, um, you know, emotional chaos and uh, you know, a lot of it is, is in terms of their health and well-being, but lost, disconnected, um, and and not sure, um, you know, what they're going to do next. If they get, a say, a heart condition, then they can't work anymore. So what is it I do now? You know, sort of that lostness, right? Um, and we seem to be somewhat disconnected, right? And, and a lot of... I, uh, from my experience, disconnected from ourselves, right, and and from the environment from which we we live. So one of the things that I've been dealing with in my own life, in terms of how I've experienced my own disconnect from myself and and the world, is um, I uh, as I was uh, getting my ed- education and just you know things that were happening in my life. I started to uh, be connected with with certain things, and you'd mentioned in you know in in, in sharing about me a couple of things that I, that have come to me. It's not that I discovered them; it's like they they presented to me, and and I and I I connected with them, like they resonated with me, right? And one of those things is is the power of our own heart. Mm. And the other piece would be the reconnection with the land. So the place in which we situate ourselves. And, uh, and one of the, the authors that I lean towards, his name is Bill Plotkin. And one of the things he talks about is uh, our wild indigenous selves, right? And that doesn't mean, you know, crazy selves or barbaric selves in terms of wild, right? But more about wild as the wild flowers are wild. Yeah, like the raw nature of it all. Like we're we're we we have this inherent wildness, right? Or connection to the earth, right? Because we are earth. We're nature. And somehow humans we have forgotten that. You know, one of the 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 chief, an indigenous uh, chief, and I just forget his name at this moment, but he says something like this: "Humans are but one thread in the web of life." Mm-hmm. Right? We didn't create the web. We don't control the web. We're just one web, a uh, one one uh, one thread, and we seem to have forgotten our place. Right? Yeah. Well, we're trying to control the web, aren't we? Mm. And we've let uh, the ego and uh, and our achievements and and our pride that that gets now indirectly and sometimes intentionally connected to these miraculous feats of achievement and and we somehow think we are above it all and that's uh, it's our our greatest achievement our, our greatest strength and and our biggest weakness. You know, I, I've had so many profound experiences in my life. And um, and <laughs> I remember sending a note to Holly, and I, 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 I can't remember what, what prompted it, but I was commenting on the um, ancient Sitka spruce that were in the immediate proximity to where I was. So these are trees that are 800, 900, 1,000 years old. And, um, and Holly sent me a note and said, you know, they know you're there. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I, that was so profound to me. And I, and, you know, I can imagine some people th- listening to this thinking, well, you know, he probably wears hemp and <laughs> <laughs> we won't, we won't share any secrets. <laughs> no. Um, and I thought, well, well of course I mean, you know, we're so limited in our in our thinking in terms of what life means and what sentient life means. And you know, if something doesn't have a mouth on it, then why would it be worth speaking to? And and frankly, most of the people, most of the things that have mouths on them, probably we think aren't worth speaking to. Certainly, the irony in that, actually. Yeah, no kidding. And yet, some of the deepest learning will come from from things that are very much alive. And quite happy to communicate with us if we just simply shut up long enough to to open our hearts to listen. And it was Holly that really introduced me to that whole concept. Well, it's it's a really this is a probably the most profound thing that uh, when you get it, 
and and you you really um, internalize it, it is the difference maker in my experience. There's a reason why I'm uh, running a podcast because I actually really like to listen to people because there is a richness to the story that is not necessarily being told but it's underneath but you can't actually hear it if you're not listening um there was a a metaphor that was created for me a handful of years ago by uh, a shaman practicing shaman he was a business partner of mine uh, and we based uh, a whole philosophy in uh, in marketing in this world and in, in building awareness in this new the new age and we use a tree that uh, an oak tree doesn't try to be a different tree it is an oak tree oak tree oak tree it, the roots match the branches it is it is so uh, definitive yet we are constantly trying to be something or striving for something that's not in alignment with who we are at our core because we have lost our ability to listen to what's being said. That's always talking. And this is one of the things, Holly, that and, um, I, I really look forward to hearing you talk about it and, and really deepen this, uh, this understanding of uh, these other um, entities that are guiding us, are really trying to guide us, and we just need to pay attention mm-hmm. to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The some of the terms they, uh, I've um, you know been privy to learn how to speak about them is you know the other than humans. Mm-hmm. You know we're one species among many, mm-hmm. right? And the other thing is uh, that, you know when it comes to the heart, everything's alive, everything's pulsating, right? And the human, you know. Um, you know, we'll, we're pulsating too. We have a heart, right, that beats. Um, but everything is pulsating. And uh, the new science of the heart talks about the heart is more than a pump, that it that pulsates, that and that pulsation sends out waves into the environment. And this isn't woohoo. This is now science that they can they can actually they have equipment that measures the waves that are coming off of the heart and the brain. The brain sends sends waves too, but the heart's waves are 5,000 times more powerful. They're the electromagnetic waves. And so in, and information is, is uh, carried on those waves. So the information that we're experiencing in our body, and a lot of it has to do with our emotional state, that's carried. And, and we know that intuitively. We do. We know if we walk in a room and somebody's just had a fight, it's like, okay, like, I, you know, we can cut that with a knife, the air, right? So we, we know it. But now science is proving what we have known for eons. But ignored for the most part. Or, Often. Or mm-hmm. didn't want to address because it was really uncomfortable. Right, right. We don't like uncomfortable situations. Right, right. So now we can... With the new science and and the new understandings we have, uh, and for myself, especially in these two areas, like we understand a lot about a lot of things now. But for me, in my own life, uh, and and this is what I do to assist others. This is kind of what my purpose is, mm. is is creating experiences and opportunities for people to reconnect with the power of their own hearts and to reconnect with the land. So that's something that is really uh, it's one of my passions yeah mm-hmm. yeah i i can tell and even though you haven't uh dug deep yet you can just tell that it's one of those things that uh, there's a richness to it that that um if you're willing and i think this is the the biggest opportunity in uh, this event from from my perspective in particular is the opportunity is to um slow down and spend some time and tom and i actually talked about this to spend some time and just pay attention to what's going on and what's uh what what's what's pulling at us is it the right thing that's pulling at us or are we just kind of going with the flow and letting it take over because it doesn't have to yeah you know the metaphor that that was coming to mind as you were talking is um 
if we were all on an LRT, LRT train, so on a car, so everyone listening to this, and this massive hand came or vehicle came and lifted our car off the rails and set it aside, and there was no way we couldn't get off. We weren't, we weren't in danger. Nothing bad was going to happen to us. But until the doors opened on their own, we were on the car. So our choice was we could spend whatever amount of time we have together stuck on this car, whining and complaining about the fact that we're stuck on this car and all the stuff that we aren't getting to do because we're stuck on this car. Or like you were saying a minute ago, we could devote that time to listening and learning about the people that are in our midst and wondering why is it that, that the universe arranged for us to be in this place at this time with these, these people to learn what it is we're about to learn. Yeah, um, th that's really well said. There is a, an opportunity for e anybody listening and certainly for everybody that we want to have show up to, to be here to join the car voluntarily and, uh, and learn something that, uh, that you've not yet given yourself the opportunity to expand and deepen because there's no, there's no time for it anymore, right? We're, we're always, there's always something that's demanding us uh, and demanding our attention and, and diverting us and preventing us from, from doing that. Uh, and we have it that that's just how it goes. And that's not how it goes. That's how you've let it go. And uh, I think the, the real opportunity for all of us is to uh, get back in the driver's seat of uh, what's always been there and available to us in, in, in navigating life, right? And in, in moving forward. Uh, and this is the thing that I think I'm, I'm most excited about is there's no right answer to this. There are many paths. There are many uh, options to, uh, to journey along and, and just this being an act of discovering. And when it's, when there's no actual right way of doing it, then any way is the right way. And for everybody that's speaking at this event, they get to share a real insight because it is in a discovery of their way, not the way, which is what we've become so infatuated by the way to do it. And, and we're not allowing the, the, the true force that's, that's really wanting to come come out and, and be expressed and, and have everybody, we, we want to feel fulfilled and, and, uh, and leading a purpose-driven life. It's evident. Otherwise, we wouldn't be in such discord. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to, as you were talking, I'm trying to think about when the, the title of my book came to me. Um, but initially, um, I'll have to play it for you sometime. There's a James Taylor song and, um, it's build it behind your eyes. And I had that as the, as the title of the book for the longest time. And then my wife said, um, why are you talking about building it behind your eyes? That's in their head. Isn't that, you've been, you read the book and the whole book talks about people getting out of their head and getting into their heart. So what's, what's with that? And I thought, um, keying on what you said, it, it's, it's the first part of the title is it's enough to be on your way. That we all start from somewhere and many of us start from here. And that's great. It's enough to be on your way. And that this day is very much about joining in to a, a series of seekers almost, you know, there's a, this... Um, pilgrimage in, in Europe, the Camino de Santiago, mm -hmm. which many pilgrims travel on every, every year. We've had a few on the podcast that shared their, yeah. their trip, their pilgrimage. Yeah. And so everybody's at a different place in this, in this process. It's not about, I mean, for them, it, it may have a lot to do with their faith, but 
this this journey to purpose, I don't think is so much about faith it is, as it is. All of us are starting at different places. We are all at different places on that path. Uh, and we all benefit immensely, immeasurably by others that are on it. I mean, I've shared with you a little bit about the insights that, that Holly's wisdom has shared and what I've been reading of yours, uh, David, and, and, and the insights that that shared with me. Um, be, because I don't know you, you ever get there. I don't know what the end of this path is, what that looks like. Um, but it's a really cool journey and it gets even more exciting when you begin to pay attention, as you said, listen and learn about the other people that are on this journey with you. That's the game. Yeah. Should you choose to accept it? There you go. Exactly. Uh, and it is a, a level of acceptance. So I, um, I, I don't want to give away too much. Uh, I want people to come to a day on purpose and hear what it is that you want to share with everybody as we've designed it. If you were to leave something with our listeners in anticipation for um, what they might uh, get to uncover at a day on purpose, what do you think, what would you leave with somebody? Well, I think um, a couple of things is that um, our heart is powerful beyond measure and we're just on the cusp of discovering the power uh, that our heart uh, holds and expresses. And I mean, when I'm saying that, it, um, it helps us in so many ways. It can, it can, it can shift us physiologically and, and emotionally and psychologically by, by, you know, the, the rhythms that it has. It can connect us with our deepest intuition. So we can actually begin to ask it questions and it will answer us, right? And really share with us the core of who we are. So we have, we have a, a mechanism. We have inner technology that will do us, do that for us if we just know in some ways how to bring it to its, um, uh, what we might call a coherent place, uh, which then allows us to to access it that way. We also know that the heart, because it's it's a it's a electrical mechanism, and so therefore it has magnetic waves. We know that we can connect to to a, a larger field, if you will, right? And we also know there's be, there's research being done that that the, those electromagnetic waves not only connect with our own body and cells with other humans, but with the earth itself. And so this, we're just on the cusp of discovering of, of the power that we hold within us that beats every moment of every day and keeps us alive and drives us, gives us vitality. And we're just, uh, it's, it's from, from my perspective, it's just like unbelievable. And then, and then the other piece of that is, is the earth itself. Um, uh, Brian Swim, uh, a, a, a scientific researcher said that then this really stuck to me. He said in one of his books uh, that I was reading is that a star had to blow up so that carbon and the elements were created for the planet earth and for humans to, for planet earth. So all living beings and for humans to exist. And so he was saying, a star died for you. And when I heard that, that was just like, I just felt blown away because it's like, we're not insignificant. If a star in the universe had to die for us to exist, it's like, whoa. Then there is, there's, then there is a reason. There's got to be a reason uh, from my perspective that each one of us is here and doing what it is that we're born to do. And it is a process, right? Like I, I believe everything that happens to us you know, brings us to where we are. Um, and so it's all part of the journey. But um, those are two things, I think, the power of the heart and the, and the connecting with the land so that we can be reconnected, not disconnected, and, uh, and, to, and then to discover what, it, what it's ours to be and do in a larger way. So I, that's kind of what I got. Yeah, well said. Um, my, uh, when my brother passed away, I ended up going into the mountains. Uh, I, I didn't really know what 
to do with myself. And I allowed myself to, to just be okay with not knowing what to do with myself. But there was a pull for me to go to the mountains. And so that's where I went. I went to Kananaskis uh, up in up in the areas and I was just driving and I was super emotional and um but then there was a calm that occurred when I got out of the vehicle and put my two feet on the ground and and just breathed yeah it was a, a chaotic crazy time in my life when isn't there a chaotic crazy time in our lives uh, but there is such a grounding force to to our environment, to our uh, our places um, that we are an hour away from, and uh, and we're stuck in our houses by choice. When we could just take a drive and and get the therapy that we're looking for, um, so I, I totally resonate with that. Um, and and and, it, and that space kind of says to you when you get there I'm it, glad it you came I've been waiting for you yeah there there was a uh, an embrace that I experienced mm -hmm. without a doubt um so Holly um that's all we're gonna give people for now because I, I want uh like I said I want people to really experience it and we've got um an incredible roster of uh powerful people who you're uh, one of the first that uh, that's on the podcast, and we're going to have everybody on the podcast and just share a little bit and and give uh, those listening a, um, a reveal behind the curtains of what's possible, and uh, and then there's the 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 bigger, deeper dive that that's being made available. So I want to thank you for trusting a stranger and coming on a microphone, not having done it before and, and uh, sharing a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome.